Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Start Inspired. I am your host, Samantha March. As always, thank you so much for listening to a new episode or if you are watching on the YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. Uh, in this week's episode, I am going to be talking a little bit more about money, a little bit more about focusing on your finances, and this goes into play with the May Healthy Habits calendar that I had available to download for free on my website, which is bysamanthamarch.com. I had mentioned this at like the end of April, the beginning of May, when it comes to these podcast episodes, but I wanted to just reflect back on it now that we are almost on the end of May. And I wanted to share five of my favorite days that I have on this calendar. If you're new to the Healthy Habits calendar, basically what it is is a one month download and every single day has a different healthy habit on there. A tip, a goal, a challenge, sometimes a journal prompt, something along those lines. And I actually started doing this back in 2019 and it's just kind of kept going throughout the years and it's kind of what inspired my entire business by Samantha March. And when I started to make these as a free download on the website starting this year in 2023, I do them every other month and I try to have them be a little bit more on theme instead of just being kind of a generalized healthy habits is to have themes. So when I did this two months ago in March, it was kind of focused on spring, spring cleaning, decluttering, that sort of thing. But the one topic that I kept seeing recommended over and over again, or the one theme that I keep seeing, seeing recommended was finances. So that is what the May calendar was really focused on. And I had originally thought to, to have all of my podcasts in May be kind of centered around the calendar and finances. But then there was just a few other things that I wanted to talk about. So I talked about some um, non-negotiable daily habits. I talked about victim mentality and when it came to my own financial situation and my own victim mentality at the time and how it held me back and how I had to get over that. Uh, but I wanted to flip back around as I believe this will be the last, no, this will be the second to last episode in May. Um, so I just wanted to tie it back in with the calendar because these are a free download, like I said, on bysamanthamarch.com. But at the beginning of the next month, they do go away. So they're not available to download anymore. And with these calendars, if you download them, I mean, the calendars are yours. I know a lot of people print them out, but you can have them. So maybe January's calendar, you're like, hey, I think this really makes sense for me to do again in July. Or for the May money calendar, you're like, mm, well, I'm downloading it on May you know, 25th or whatever it may be, or May 30th, but I'll do it in June, or I'll come back to it and I'll do it in October. It doesn't matter, but you do need to download it before the, ideally the first like few days of June is typically then when I take it off the website as I'm preparing for July's calendar. Also, if there is any themes that you want for uh, July's calendar. I would love if you would share those with me. You can always DM me on Instagram. I'm by Samantha March. You can leave a comment on the YouTube video if that is where you are watching. Uh, but I would love to know because as of right now, I don't have any thoughts for July. <laughs> I don't know what the July calendar is going to be yet. So if you have any feedback, do let me know. But I'm going to jump into the five, five of my favorite days. And honestly, I could have chose like 10 for this. I mean, there are so many of the days on the calendar that I love so much. I just, I recommend the full calendar. You can do it at your own pace. You can do it in your own way. If I have something on Friday and it works better for you to do on a Sunday, you know, again, I'm making a generalized calendar that hundreds and hundreds of people are downloading every single month. You can also personalize it to yourself. And I do also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions through my website and the goal of that is to also make your own personalized calendar for the following month. So I talk with you over your goals, your habits, your routines, what you want your goals, your habits, your routines to look like. And then at the end, I am putting together your own personalized healthy habits calendar. So it's more fully geared towards you versus just this general one that I'm putting out for so many others. Uh, but before we jump into the podcast, I just want to say, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, I hope that you'll like the video or subscribe. This is my second channel. I do have my main channel, which is mostly focused on beauty. And I did want to say that I missed last week's um, 
podcast upload and I haven't uploaded like a right quote unquote regular video for this channel in a, in a minute um, because my May, you know, got a little bit away from me. If you follow me on other platforms or if you've watched the videos on my main channel, you will know that right at the beginning of the month, uh, my dog, who a lot of times you see in this podcast episodes, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. So she is sitting on my desk right now. She is here with me. Um, but it is a pretty aggressive cancer. And at the beginning of the month when they told me, they were they were telling me that I only had days left with her, which was really difficult. So we have now made it to a few weeks, which I think is amazing. Um, and I'm just, you know, trying to do the best that I can in this current reality and um, doing the best for my dog at this time. But I was able to do a podcast episode a couple weeks ago and I couldn't get the energy to do like regular videos for my main channel. And then last week it was the opposite. I was doing videos for my main channel and I was like, I just don't have the stamina to be able to do a podcast as well. So I'm, I'm trying to do the best that I can with the career that I have it's a little bit difficult because I know in the past when I've worked like a more traditional job and I've gone through hard times such as losing my grandmother was, was a really difficult time for me. Um, I remember that I actually requested to work overtime at my job at the hospital because it was such a good distraction to get away from everything that was happening and my thoughts and I could just go and I worked at a hospital, I could just make appointments and I could order labs and it just was something else that I could be focusing on. But with this career, it's very personal and my dog is in a lot of my videos. I'm editing with her, talking about her, I'm talking about my personal life. A lot of these videos that I do on this channel are more vlog style and she's obviously in it and just like our life looks really different right now. Our whole routines look very different. Um, so it's really hard because my job doesn't give me a distraction like is something that I kind of am craving these days um, to not have to like always just be consumed with these thoughts. So I wanted to say that that's why there hasn't been a regular video up, but I'm planning on it. I've seen a lot of people request a what I eat in a day video. So that's what I'm planning to be my next one. I do have a shorts up on this channel on that, but I do want to do a full vlog style video focusing on what I eat in a day. But I wanted to mention that before we jumped into it and I, I actually was thinking about doing uh, this week's podcast episode on trying to incorporate your healthy habits during a time of grief but to be honest I just again like I need something else to talk about and if you're following me you know you get to pick and choose what it is that you watch and you get to pick and choose when you want to consume content that's a little bit more sad whereas this is like this is my life this is my reality this is what i'm going through i don't i don't i don't necessarily have that option to pick or choose like it's always right here um but i can at least choose what i want to focus on and my videos to be on and i really just didn't have it in me to sit down and like rehash everything again i still think it'll be an interesting podcast episode to do in the future because it's been interesting to see how i've leaned on my habits especially my morning routine um, as I try to get back into the swing of things after giving myself about a week to like not get out of bed and only eat white cheddar popcorn and drink Sprite for whatever was my go-to. Um, so I think it will still be an interesting topic to cover. I just personally don't have it in me right now to be able to do it. Um, but again, you know, I hope that you will like uh, and subscribe, leave a, leave a comment if you will, or if you are listening on like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you want to rate, review it, or if you share it anywhere, if you're listening, you want to screenshot, share on social media. Again, I am by Samantha March on Instagram. But let's jump into five of my favorite days from the May Healthy Habits calendar. So this first one is, you know, one of the first days on the calendar but it is being very specific with your goals. So this is something that I definitely have done as well, where it's like, oh, I wanna save a lot of money by the end of the year. But that doesn't really give you any sort of motivation. That doesn't give you any sort of timeline. That doesn't give you any sort of deadlines. That doesn't give you any sort, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any sort of anything. And also to just say, I want to save a lot of money, that means something different to everybody. I remember one of my first jobs out of college was as a travel agent. Almost every single client who would call the travel agency 
and I would go through my list of questions and I would say, what is your budget? I would always get an ambiguous answer. Well, not too much. Well, we don't want it to be too expensive. Well, if it's kind of expensive, that's okay, but like not really expensive. And it's like, I'm a broke college student. I have no idea what that means. Like I'm living off chicken nugs from McDonald's. Like, I don't know, you're, you're taking your family of five to Disneyland. Like we have different budgets. So when you're telling me it's not like, don't make it too expensive. I'm like, you got $5? Like, I don't know what that means. So I remember talking to my boss at the time and she was like, you have to get very specific on what your clients want, what their budget is, what they are looking for, because they do all give these just ambiguous answers. So same comes true when it comes to your financial journey. If you are trying to save money, what is the exact amount of money that you are trying to save? And what is the exact time frame for that? Do you want to save $10,000 by December 31st? Do you want to save $100,000 by 2026? What is it? Because also being specific like this helps you be able to make your goals. And this ties in with my second tip as well. But another thing on the calendar that I'll mention, because again, like I said, I have so many favorite days, but another day is to set your goals and then work backwards from that. So in three months, if you want to save $3,000, that means you have to save $1,000 a month or you can break it down by week. But you can't figure out, you know, what I say a lot is to take your goal and then to break it down into little tiny pieces, smaller, 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 the better. But if you just say you want to save a lot of money, how do you actually make a goal from that? What does that mean? Whereas if you can say, I want to save a thousand dollars a month, then you can start to understand what it looks like even, you know, per week. Um, and you can start to make a plan for that of how you're going to hit those savings goals. So in order to really go after them, you have to have a very clear path, a very clear vision of what that means. And so then that ties in with one, my second tip, my second favorite day is understanding your financial outlook and your financial situation. And we do this by tracking. One of my favorite things, I have talked about tracking so much already on this channel and in this podcast, but I truly don't feel like we can change our situations unless you actually know your situation. So I've talked about this before with healthy habits. If you wanna incorporate more healthy habits into your daily routine, what are your habits right now? What does your routine look like right now? And how I say, write down every little thing, even if you just spend 10 minutes reading or 10 minutes staring into space, you gotta track that, you gotta write that down because that helps you get a full outlook of your day, not just you worked from eight to 12 and then you ate lunch and then you worked again from two to four and then you worked out and then you ate at five o'clock. Like, that's not really helping you give an actual outlook of what your day looks like and what your routines and habits look like. And same with your finances. You can't just say, oh, I brought in this much money from my paycheck, I spent this much money on bills, and I went out to eat a couple of times. Like, again, that's a good start, but it's not really help. Are you bringing in any other income? You know, I just restarted my Poshmark closet, so like now I'm gonna have to, to incorporate that into my spreadsheets. And I just use Excel spreadsheets, spreadsheets. There's a lot of free budgeting trackers out there, or there's ones that you can pay for. For me, I just use, actually not Excel, I'm sorry, I use Google, the Google Docs. That's what I do to track everything. My accountant loves me, for sure. Uh, but I'm very old school. <laughs> but now I will have to include, like even if I'm making just $100 from Poshmark, I'm going to include that. Even if I go out and I only spend $3.47 on a breakfast sandwich and you're like, well, that's just $3, all of this continues to add up. And so you need to make sure that you are tracking all of those little transactions in between as well, because this gives you, this is what's gonna to start to give you that full financial outlook. So then you can compare every single month, I compare how much I brought in versus how much I, I spent out. How much I brought in versus how much I gave up. You know what I mean? And I see every single month, I see that number. Did I make more than I spent? Or did I spend more than I made this month? That is what I have to know every single month. I have to know what that number is. And again, this all goes back to having more control over our finances and hopefully our goal of financial freedom. We can't really have that or start to go after these goals if we don't know what our financial situation looks like right now. 
And that was a big eye-opener for me years ago when I wanted to take control of my finances. I was only making $8,000 a year. I was $40,000 in debt. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, how do I get out of this? And the first step was tracking my finances and understanding. And then that way you're able to make goals. Then that way you're able to make specific goals. That's where it all starts. So you have to track, you have to get a really clear vision of what your financial outlook looks like. I wanted to include the next one because it's a little bit of a challenge and I love me a good challenge. And I think challenges are important. I do little challenges for myself here or there because it does something to your mind. <laughs> It does something to your mind. To me, it does something to my spirit. When I set out to do something that's hard and I can accomplish it, accomplish it, it makes me feel like I can do anything. I remember one of the first times really pushing myself was many years ago. I was doing Jillian Michaels 30 Day Shred. And I was like, can I really do 30 days of these very intense exercises while at the same time being more mindful of what I'm consuming, trying to eat better, all of these things. When I made it to the end of the 30 days, I truly felt like I was in the best shape of my life and I felt great. And I was just like, wow, like I did, like it was hard. It was hard. I remember I was on Instagram at that time and I was like, I remember sharing photos of me just laying on my yoga mat, like, <laughs> did Jillian go through this shirt again? Like it was difficult. Uh, even something like I did the elimination challenge for or the, no, not the, no, the elimination diet, which was a challenge but I did it for the first time in 2021 at the suggestion of my doctor because I was trying to figure out why I was constantly bloated, why I was throwing up after every single meal, uh, why I just didn't feel good all around, why I gained 30 pounds in three months. And so I did the elimination diet and that was very hard. I did it for 30 days. I cut out basically everything. I really wasn't even leaving my apartment because I definitely was very moody probably from a lot of the cravings and like detoxing my body of sugar I mean gluten dairy like again pretty much everything but I felt great afterwards but I also felt like mentally it was so hard doing that elimination diet the first time and doing it for the full 30 days and doing it like absolutely cutthroat was so mentally challenging that I've actually told people, I don't know if I really recommend it, at least just doing it on your own without like a doctor supervision, because it really started to make me, I feel like almost have a bad relationship with food, which I've never struggled with. And it was like, every time I would open my fridge, I'd be like, I can't have this, or I can't have that, or that's bad for you, or that's, and, it was really starting to mess with my mind at the end and I was starting to get really sad and upset. And that was a little bit worrisome to me, but I understood why I was doing it. I had my doctor that I could be checking in with and all of those things. But then again, I did that in late summer of 2021. And then around uh, Christmas time at, at the end of the year of 2020, no, 2022, sorry, 2022 is when I decided to do an elimination diet again, but not quite as intense as the first one. And I was only doing it for 10 days. And all I was cutting out this time was caffeine, refined sugar, and alcohol, right? I think those were the, I'm saying only things that I gave up. But the hardest thing for me has always been sugar. I've always said that I have a sugar addiction. It's not good, all of that. And so that's like what was my main goal of can I do 10 days? It ended up being two weeks that I that I did it. But can I can I really do this? Can I focus on making all of my meals at home, not going out to eat one time, um, focusing on my fitness, doing other things too, like going to sleep earlier. Um, I was doing the steam room on a regular basis, meditation. So I really took those two weeks and it was kind of like a health reset. And I felt great but also it's like mentally challenging to do something like that. And when you can accomplish it and you do it, it makes you feel some type of way. And again, these are challenges because even though that's kind of what I'm trying to set up to be more of a lifestyle thing, doing something a little bit more extreme doesn't have to be your every day, at least for me. Like I'm not striving to be on this extreme food plan every single day. I'm not 
that's that's not what I'm going for. But doing something like that for two weeks helps you set up healthier habits into play. So I think challenges are good for our mind. They can be good for our body. They can be good for our spirit. Um, they can be good for our self-confidence. So I like to include some little challenges in the calendar. And on this one, I put in a couple of low spend and also a no spend day. This was something that I set up for myself years ago as well because I just felt like I needed that challenge because I had really gotten to a point where it was like, I'll just buy whatever I want whenever I want. It doesn't matter if I couldn't afford it. I would put it on a credit card. Uh, it didn't matter if I was like, I probably shouldn't do this. Like I was like, I'm gonna do it anyways. I mean, I just was not, I didn't have any control over my finances. Like I, I wasn't in control for sure. And so this to me, even back at, I mean, this I'm talking was like, I don't know, six, seven years ago maybe. I still was in that that mindset of how do I set myself up for a challenge, which was probably what's continued into well into my 30s. And so I wanted to do this because this makes you think when you have those low spend days or a no spend day, it really makes you think about every single purchase that you're making. So say you have a low spend day and you're like, you know what, like $5 at Starbucks, is that really that big of a deal? I don't know, is it? Ask yourself. It can be a different answer for everybody, but maybe to you it is a yes because maybe that's your favorite part of your day. Don't take that away. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to take away your favorite things that you really look forward to. Um, but just think about, just stop and think about them. That's all I'm asking you to do. Uh, and sometimes you'll realize, eh, that's not something that's really important to me. And maybe it's something you thought was important to you. Maybe you thought going out to lunch every day was the highlight of your day. And then you're like, you know what, actually, I don't mind making my own meals. I don't mind meal prepping throughout the week. It's easier for me. It's more convenient. I don't have to drive somewhere whatever whatever it may be but just stop and think about it and that's what these low spend and no spend days did for me to me i think it's really important where they go on the calendar again when i do this calendar it's very generalized but to you you know you could have monday through friday you are out of your home and maybe things are not able to be as planned maybe meal prepping isn't as easy for whatever it may be but maybe saturdays you're at home and that's like your chill day maybe that's a good day to have a low spend day maybe you're not going anywhere you can make all of your own meals you can read a book that you've already purchased you're not spending even you know a dollar 99 to purchase something on kindle you can listen to podcasts you can watch free youtube videos your netflix that you didn't pay for on that day it's already been paid for for the month it just makes you slow down a little bit and evaluate all of your purchases and decide what's really important to you and what's not. And maybe some, maybe some bigger realizations can come from these days. But again, I always like to go throw a good challenge in there. So I challenge you to I'm trying to think how many did I put on my cal I have my calendar pulled up here. Let me just double check how many. I think I did oh two no spend days and two low spend days. So there you go, aim for that. So we are over to number four. This is one of my favorite days. This is a day that we just had on the calendar and I sent out an email at this time. Um, Cause when I do these calendars, not only do you get the calendar download, but then I email you just a couple times throughout the month. I don't email you like every day or a lot of times it's not even every week. Um, just when I feel compelled to and I have some extra time, I'll just shoot out an email to say like, hey, this is what we're working on today. This is what we're working on coming up. Here's how I did it. Here's what I'm working on, that sort of thing. So I just sent out an email about this day that we did on the 19th, which was cancel anything you don't use or need. So this is, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day about this actually. And she was like, so you're telling me I should cancel the gym membership that I've been paying for for two years two years and she's been there like twice and none in this year I was like could you could you please cancel that for the love of all things like please cancel that uh you know for me when I was doing this I found that I was spending $12 every single month it was just a reoccurring charge for editing software that I wasn't using anymore well, hello, like I'm still paying $12 a month. And like I said in my email, there's some things that you're like, that's not really that much money. Is it really that big of a deal? If you dropped $12 in cash on the ground, would you just leave it there? Or would you pick it back up and put it in your wallet? Like, I mean, you would pick that, you, you would pick the money up, hello? And it gets to, like for me, 
I kept seeing this charge and it was going through my PayPal. So when I was seeing it on my bank account, it just said PayPal and it was like 1069 or something really random. And I was like, mm, I should really figure out what that is. Like, what am I paying down to $10 for? But, but because it was so small, I just kept putting it off and putting it off. I was like, oh, I'll figure it out another time, another time, another time. Well, this is why I try to have two times a year, just two times a year where I go through my finances and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the reoccurring charges. I'm looking for the subscriptions that I meant to cancel, but I never did. Um, I'm just taking a look. You know, at one point I had Hulu, Netflix, and YouTube TV, and I don't even watch TV, nor do I watch movies. I was like, how do I have all three of these? This is ridiculous. You know, you had to cancel some. Um, this could also be a good time to look at things like your cell phone bill. Is there a way that you could lower that? You could look at your car insurance. Is there a way to lower that? Uh, it's just, it's a little bit time consuming. Like it can take a few hours to go through everything and track everything and hunt everything down and figure out what is what. But you can also find and start to save a lot of money that way. I sent out this email, you know, last week to everyone who downloaded the calendar. This was the day that I, I didn't count exactly. But to tell you, I want to use the word overwhelmed, but that's not, I feel like that sounds like a bad connotation. But I started to receive so many emails back from that email. Like I think that was my most replied to email from these calendar downloads that I do. And people were sharing what they had, had learned and what they had found out. You know, one was saying she found $46 a month in reoccurring charges that didn't need to happen. And she was also able to lower her cell phone bill. And I was like, amazing. One said she, oh my gosh, what was the, no, that was over $50 that she had found. Another one told me it was $146 over, a, no, not over. $146 was the total that she found in reoccurring monthly, monthly charges that she was able to cancel. I'm just gonna pull $146 a month times 12 months. That's $1,752 a year that she is saving now. Huh? I mean, when I tell you that that makes me so ex $1,700 a year? I would like an extra $1,700 a year. That's fantastic. So again, it does take a little bit of time, but this is why I recommend to do it twice a year. It's again, it's a good way to check in on your finances. It's a good way to decide because maybe at one point it made sense for me. Like, I think the reason I had all three is because I like to watch shows on Netflix, but I feel like at the time I could only watch the Cubs like on YouTube TV, which is baseball, but then I watch all my football on Hulu, something sports related, of course, because I love sports. But then something happened with the Cubs moved to a different channel and it, was, it didn't make any more sense for me to have YouTube TV. So, you know, things can change. You might need something during these first six months, but maybe for the next six months, you don't need it and you can always change. And if you cancel something and you decide you want it, you can buy it back. It's not that big of a deal. So go through your finances, see what you can cancel, negotiate, pay less for, I don't think you're gonna regret it. All right, and then the last one that we have tip number five is to automate. I think that this is such a good system and this was something that helped me out so, so much when I was younger and when I was really struggling with my finances. I think it did also help at the time that I worked a traditional job that I was able to very easily say, I want a percentage to automatically go into my 401k and then my job match that. That's something if you work a traditional job and your employer matches your 401k, please look into that and please automate your fight, your, your paycheck to do that because I, that's something I could talk about for so long because I think it's so important, but you can do that. You can also say that you want a percentage of your paycheck to go into your savings account and then the rest of it to be deposited into this. You just give different account numbers. That to me was a game changer when I figured out that that was something that I could do and I found it very helpful. The less responsibility we have to take on ourselves when it comes to our finances, I feel like that sounds weird to say, but I feel like it's better. The less opportunity that we give ourselves to make excuses when it comes to finances is, is better. I think that's, that's, that's the wording I want to use. The less excuses that we can give ourselves when it comes to our finances, the better. Meaning, say 100% of your paycheck is going into your checking account 
every two weeks, every month. And then it's up to you. You decide. You look and you say it's $100. Let's make this easy. You got $100 and you're like, hmm, I could put 10% of that into my savings account, but this month is kind of crazy because I have this birthday party. I have a graduation party. I kind of wanted to buy these new shoes. So like it might not make the most sense to put that 10% in this month. I'll do it next month. Next month, maybe I'll even, I'll put in 20%. So you don't move any money over. You don't put any money into savings. You don't put any money towards your credit card bill. And then the next month comes along and you're like, mm. you know, this month kind of got away from me. I had a, I had to go to the doctor. Now I have this doctor bill and the price of milk is higher. Have you seen the price of eggs? I don't think it makes the most sense to put this money towards my savings or my debt goal. The less excuses that we can give ourselves, the better. If you can automatically start putting that money in, the better for you. I realized it was through my Fidelity account is where I have like my IRA and um, like stock options that there was, um, there's something on there that you can set up every single month automatically to move money over. And once I, I don't even like, you know, I see it on my bank account, but I don't have to do everything. I, I don't have to do anything for everything. I just see it once a month, boom, there it goes. goes. Oh, okay. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to, I didn't have the opportunity to give myself excuses not to move money into my savings. It's automatically going there. I think some places have it set up for debt as well. An automatic, just boom, automatic payment going to your credit card bill. Automatic, automatic, automatic. So that way we don't have to do it. We don't have to touch it. We don't have to make the excuses for it. Again, it kind of goes into what I talked about prior though, is that you do want to make sure that you keep in hand, a handle on this and you do know what your finances are going towards every month because maybe it gets to a point where it doesn't make sense to automate something. You, you know, you do always have to keep track. But if you can automate, especially something going into your savings account, a 401k, an IRA, or if you can automate, you know that you want, your goal is $100 every single month to your credit card bill, automate it. Set it up. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to make the excuses of, well, this month the minimum payment's only $25 and I'm feeling a little bit strapped here or there. So like, I'm just going to do $25. Automate it. Again, of course, another caveat. Some months are gonna look different than others. Some months you really are going to have a financial responsibility that's more important. But on a whole, if you can automate, I do think it's very important. And this was something that really helped me both with my 401k when I was at a traditional job and with my savings, my 401k now through Fidelity. So all of that I think is very important. Those are five of my favorite days from the May Healthy Habits calendar. Again, you can get your free download on buysamanthamarsh.com. You can start working towards June. You can save it for another month if you want. But those are five days that I really wanted to spotlight because I feel like they're very important and I hope that you found it helpful. If you've downloaded your calendar, if you have a favorite day, please leave it in the comments, DM, share with me on Instagram. Uh, and again, if you have any other themes that you would wanna see for July, you want something summer related, you want something fitness related, you add whatever it is you want, you want like a reading challenge, I don't know, whatever it is that you want, please leave me some suggestions because as always, I just want these to be the most helpful to you. So I hope that you have been enjoying your May. I just wanna say that I appreciate all of the good thoughts and the positive comments that I have received um, from me with the situation with me and my dog Aries and the journey that we are going on and that we are fighting through right now, it really does mean so much. So thank you and thank you for your support and watching because um, that all always helps. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed listening and I'll see you next week.